who will top my list of the top 10 West Indies batsmen of all time. Tune in to find out. Coming in at number 10 is Rohan Kanai, one of the West Indian rates with a test batting average of 47.53, played 79 test matches, played seven ODIs as well. ODI, he averaged 54.66, scored 15 centuries in the test arena in 2850s, 6,227 runs, and a highest of 255. Rohan Kanai was known for his flair and innovative batting style, often playing shots that were unconventional yet highly effective his ability to adapt and his imaginative stroke play made him a fan favorite and a nightmare for bowlers his artistry with the bat and his ability to perform in different conditions made him one of the most beloved and respected batsmen in the cricket history so Rohan Kanai for me comes in at number 10 coming in at number nine is one of the most powerful players that West Indies cricket ever produced his name Gordon Greenwich. Gordon Greenwich is, you know, batting average 44.72 in 108 test matches, 7,558 runs. And yeah, as you can see on my screen, scored 19 centuries and 34 half centuries. Pretty impressive average. High score of 226. In ODI cricket, he also played 128 matches, scored 5,134 runs. 133 not out was his highest and 45.03 average. So pretty consistent across the board. 31 50s and 1100s. Gordon Greenwich was known for his powerful and aggressive style of batting. He was a key figure in West Indies team during their dominant years, forming a prolific opening partnership with Desmond Haynes. Greenwich's ability to take on best bowlers in the world in that time is top notch and combined with his technique and power, you know, made him a formidable top order player. Before we move on to number eight, we want to bring you guys a quick quiz question for this episode. This quiz question, I'm going to drop it right here for you guys to answer into the chat. Let me know what you guys think the answer is. This great West Indies fast bowler who took 249 wickets in his 60 match career can you guess who he is drop who you guys think the answer is into the comments on number eight i'm going with sir frank warrell sir frank warrell played 51 test matches scored 3860 runs at an average of 49.48 highest score 261 22 50s and nine centuries his first class record 208 matches 15,025 runs that's an impressive impressive record 208 not out is his highest score so has a triple in the first class average of 54.24 scored 80 half centuries and 39 centuries one of the best in my opinion that West Indies produced but obviously through the time that they played you know he played in 19 through 1948 to 1963 only played 51 test matches he was known for his elegant batting style and charismatic leadership he was part of the famous three w's and was instrumental in bringing about a new era of unity and success to west indies cricket as a batsman warrell was graceful and technically sound with the ability to play long innings and build partnerships his leadership in the early 1960s particularly during the famous tide test series against australia marked a turning point for west indies cricket yeah, establishing them themselves as a competitive force and a respected team on the world stage sir frank warrell is my number eight West Indies batsman of all time. So let's move on to number seven. At number seven, we have somebody who's is often considered one of the greatest West Indies batsmen, earning the nickname Black Bradman. Yes, I'm sure you guys guessed it. I'm talking about George Headley. George Headley, you know, played in only 22 test matches, high score of 270 runs, scored 2,190 runs altogether in his 22 tests, average of 60.83, five fifties and 10 centuries. That's a crazy conversion rate. It was one of the best and he, as i mentioned you know he was named the black bradman due to his remarkable consistency and high batting average playing during an era when the west indies team lacked the depth headley's performances were critical to the team's fortunes his ability to play long innings and score heavily against strong opposition to set him apart showed what a high caliber player he was and his legacy is that of a pioneer who paved the way for future generations of west indies cricket played from 1930 to 1954 only played 22 test matches matches over a career of almost 22, 24, 25 years. And you can see his first class numbers, you know, right there, 103 matches, 9,921 runs, 
344 not out was his highest, he almost an average of 70, you know, 33 centuries and 44 half centuries. Wow, what an amazing record. And, you know, he lands at number seven for me in the West Indies all time list. And you guys can let me know what you guys think. And, you know, I would love to know your top 10 rankings as well. So make sure to drop them into the comments. I would love to engage with you guys and, and would love to see where we're matching and where we're not matching. George Headley, one of the greats, comes in at number seven for me. At number six, we have one of the modern great test batsmen from West Indies cricket from Guyana, Shiv Narayan, Andrew Paul, one of modern greats from West Indies cricket, you know, career spanning 1994 to 2015, played both test cricket and ODI cricket, scored 11,867 runs in 164 test matches at an average of 51.37. And yeah, just pile the runs on high score of 203, not out 30 centuries, 66 half centuries. The consistency of this man was pretty amazing. Went on to play 164 test matches, which was huge. Also played 268 ODIs where he scored 8,778 runs uh, with the highest of 150, 41.60 average, 59 half centuries and 11 centuries and you know he wasn't really a t20 player but you can see he also played you know some t20 cricket as well but for me he was definitely one of the guys who had to carry a heavy burden for west indies cricket especially at a time of transition where you know they had you know they were struggling during the middle during most of those years that he was playing um, you know they were doing well but it was because of him who carried them carried the team through he, he had an unorth unorthodox batting style remarkable ability to you know concentrate for long periods uh, which was vital for west indies cricket for two decades defensive play was amazing uh, you know which we, we needed in test cricket and his endurance and commitment to the game you know were evident in his numerous match saving innings uh, making him one of the most reliable batsmen in west indies cricket history so that's why for me he lands at number six and the way i looked at it the burden he had to carry the impact he made under pressure uh, was pretty significant so for me shiv narayan chander paul game-changing player for west indies cricket and it definitely you know deserves to be in my top 10 at number six before we move on to number five let's Let's give you guys answer to that qu uh, the quiz question that we brought up earlier. This great West Indies fast bowler who took 249 wickets is his in his 60 match career. Can you guess who he is? If you guys guessed Michael Holding, a whispering death, you guys got this question correct. Holding was one of the all time great fast bowlers who played for the West Indies in the 60s from 1975 to 1987, taking 249 wickets with a bowling average of 23.68. So one of the great West Indies bowlers of all time. Michael Holding was the answer to this question. Let's now move on to number five. My number five pick is one of the greatest West Indies captains of all time and also one of the greatest middle order players that West Indies cricket ever produced. Made the tough runs, led from the front, the winning two-time World Cup captain for the West Indies, Clive Lloyd. Clive Lloyd was not only a powerful batsman, but also one of the most successful captains in cricket history. Known for his ability to hit the ball hard and his calm demeanor under pressure, Lloyd was a pillar of West Indies middle order. His leadership during the 1970s and early 80s transformed the West Indies cricket into a formidable force in world cricket and, you know, emphasized a blend of aggression and discipline within the team. So he took, you know, that leadership on from Sir Frank Worrell and brought that fast, fast bowler mindset and the mentality and the aggression into the team. That team became dominant. The mindset from the 60s into the 70s and then into the 80s, where they literally just dominated for, you know, 20 odd years or so. This man was at the helm for most of that time. Those World Cup wins were amazing. You can see his record right there. 110 test matches, 7,515 runs, 242 his highest, 46.67. It was his average, 39 50s and 19 centuries. Played some ODI cricket as well, an average of 39.54. Only scored 100. But if you look at his first class record, 490 matches, 31,232 runs. Intense, insane, 242 highest and almost an average of 50. Scored 7,900 and 172 50s. That record just speaks for itself, guys. I mean, that first class record is just insane. And Sir Clive Lloyd. I mean, Clive Lloyd had to be in this list for me. So he lands in at number five. All right, before we move on to number four, I'm going to give you guys your second quiz question of this episode. The second one, this wicket keeper 
took 267 catches in his test career, spanning 81 tests and also scored 3,000 plus runs. Can you identify this Jamaican player? Drop your answers into the comments and yeah, let us know who you guys think the answer is to this question. Now let's move on to number four, guys. Number four for me is one of the three W's in West Indies cricket. His name, Sir Everton Weeks. Sir Everton Weeks was known for his ability to score runs rapidly and his style was characterized by quick foot work and precision in shot selection, making him particularly effective against spin bowling. The week's record of scoring five consecutive test centuries stands as a testament to his consistency and skill. He was a central figure in the West Indies batting lineup during his era, often uh, turning the course of a game with his batting prowess. Week's approach to the game was both methodical and aggressive, making him one of the finest West Indian batsmen of all time. His test record, 48 matches, 4,455 runs, 207 highest, 58.61 average, 15 centuries, 19 half centuries, first class record of 152 runs, 12,010 runs, 304 highest, not out, and an average of 55.34. He scored 36 centuries in first class cricket and 54 50s. Great record and his career span from 1948 to 1958 was one of the three W's along with Sir Frank Worrell and Clyde Walcott. So yeah, Sir Everton Weeks lands on our list at number four. So we're moving on to top three now. So drop in the in the comments. Let me know what your guys' top three will be. I would love to know who you guys go with. On number three, we have one of the greatest cricketers arguably ever produced in world cricket. This man could do anything and he was like a Swiss army knife. And if you had him on your team, you would probably just fold because this guy could come and do anything. Ball, left arm spin, ball, left arm leg spin, bold medium pace just amazing amazing player and i'm sure you guys guessed it as you see on my screen sir garfield sobers uh, he played from 1954 to 1974 played 93 test matches 8032 runs 365 not out highest and an average of 57.78 Look at that conversion rate, 30 50s and 26 centuries and his first class record, 383 matches, 28,314 runs. Again, 365 not out, like what are the odds, right? 54.87, similar average, 86 centuries, 121 half centuries. This man was intense. Like this is just his batting stats, guys. Like what he could do with the ball was just insane. He also had 235 wickets and is considered one of the greatest all-rounders in, in world cricket, but he could be in a top 10 batting list. He could be in a top 10 bowling list he'll be in a top 10 fielding list that's how this man was universally recognized as one of the greatest all-rounders of all time as i mentioned primarily due to his incredible versatility as an all-rounder as a batsman sobers combined grace and power capable of building innings with patience or attacking when needed his record-breaking 365 not out against pakistan stood as the highest test score for over 36 years beyond his batting Sobers was an exceptional bowler and fielder contributing to the West Indies team in multiple ways. His cricketing intelligence, adaptability, and consistency made him a giant of the game, setting standards for all across the board, all around performances. So Gary Sobers for me lands at number three. Let's uh, go to number two. Now, this may be controversial for a lot of you guys because there's always a debate between these picks, but like, I think the top two greatest West Indies batters of all time, people always argue about, but but for me, player that lands in this particular spot is one of the giants of world cricket. This man is hailed as one of the most talented batsmen to ever play the game, was known for his grace and technical proficiency. Yes, I'm talking about Brian Charles Lara, one of West Indies great. You know, some of you guys, actually a lot of you guys may put him on number one because of just the sheer brilliance of the man. And as you can see, you know, 131 test matches, 11,953 runs, 400 not out. The record still stands and 52.88 average, 34 centuries, 48 half centuries. You know, those numbers still don't do justice to the talent that this man possessed and the style of which guy played and the aggressive nature was just sublime all across the board. One of my favorite players to watch while growing up, you know, the ODIs to 99 matches and almost, you know, 10,500 runs, 40 average. And his average could have been higher, I think, in ODI cricket. But, you know, just looking at overall, BC Lara was probably the prettiest batsman, like the, uh, you know, looking at it from was pretty to watch. So like if this list was ranked on who are the most prettiest batsman to watch of all time he would be number one for me so you know but looking at 
everything together. You know, Lara was a very iconic player. Still holds that 501 not out record for Warwickshire, which remains the highest individual score in first class cricket. He was a true match winner. You know, for me, he lands here at number number two because you know I, I just think it's just a tough pick with with the other person that you know we have on number one for us. So uh, yeah, let us know in the comments what you guys think of Brian Charles Lara coming in at number two, and I know some of you guys would put him at number one. So definitely, definitely understand your view. He's you know a number one and some of my lists as well but for this particular one looking at overall stats and records and trying to figure out who should land you know really from a neutral perspective i have brian charles lara at number two i hope you guys agree with me again if you don't agree with me let me know in the comments what you guys think let's find out who tops the list right here so now before we move on to number one i want to answer this quiz question that we brought up earlier in the episode this wicket keeper took 267 catches in his test career spanning 81 tests and also scored 3000 plus runs can you identify this jamaican if you guys guessed jeffrey dujon you guys were correct dujon was one of the greatest wicket keepers in the history of west indies cricket and world cricket and scored 3000 plus runs i hope you guys got it right and make sure to check out the reverse scoop shop where we support youth cricket development at the grassroots level support us if you can and absolutely smash that like button number one we're going to move on to number one what we're going to do is i'm going to give you some details for number one and i want you to take a guess into the comments what number one is and i will drop who number one is right at the end of my description of this player so i want to i want to play a little game with you guys on this number one see who you guys think this player is you know he's widely regarded as one of the greatest and most destructive batsmen in cricket history known for his swagger confidence and aggressive batting style he was a nightmare for bowlers worldwide his ability to dominate the best bowling attacks with ease and his fearless approach made him a true game changer. He played a crucial role in West Indies dominance during the 1970s and 80s, leading them to two World Cup victories in 1975 and 1979. His influence on the game extended beyond his runs as he played with flair and a bravado. I'm going to drop some more stuff here for you guys. 8,540 runs, 121 test matches at an average of 50.23. He scored 6,721 runs in ODI cricket as well at an average of 47 strike rate of 90 named one of the five was in cricketer of the century i'm sure you guys know the answer by now this is the great sir vivian richards uh, one of the greatest players of all time so for me lands here you'll see our top 10 west indies bowlers of all time video make sure to check it out right here until next time nabil khan from the reverse scoop signing off catch you later